Hello and welcome to the Dustin and Eric podcast show brought to you by Mimosa Networks. Hi, I'm Dustin. I'm Eric. And I'm Jeff. And we're on episode number 25, What to Use and When. When should I choose one radio over the other and how should I use them? So uh, one of the common questions we see in Mimosa support is, what equipment should I use to do X, Y, Z? So we're going to go through our some of our equipment and some scenarios on when to use said equipment. So the first radio we're going to talk about is the B24. So for backhaul links, we have several options. Uh, the B24 is a great radio for shorter links. Please keep in mind that as your rain zone increases, the distance on the B24 will decrease. The B24 was designed for links between rooftops or towers that are under two miles. Okay. So you have a B24. What are you going to do with it, Eric? What, what do you think is the perfect scenario for a B24 link? I think if I need a backhaul and I'm in... I'm in that uh, three kilometer range to about two mile range and I want max uh, I'll go uh, I'll go b24 and I've got the uh, I want to go to the best and I've got the funds to do it I'll go b24 I might also supply micro pops hey wow what's look going at on that. around here mm. you tricked us. I know that we see a lot of customers that use the B24 for like a campus uh, environment uh, connection where maybe they just acquired a new building across the parking lot or across uh, mm -hmm. you know a, a set of distance uh, under two miles and they'll use the B24 as their primary uh, means for backhaul to that building. Yeah so we've, we've, apl we've uh, applied those in the field here for uh, between the com in the commercial properties across the streets mm -hmm. yeah across uh, several streets and and uh, it's fantastic. Quote. So uh, if you guys are watching from home, we've got a nice slide here that wow, shows that slide. eight B24s connecting to eight A5Cs within 5360s. So the B24 was really designed for rooftop micro pops or from rooftop to rooftop uh, business connections in mind. It's a very good solution to go from one micro pop to another if you want to connect multiple micro pops together. Uh, since the B24 is using 24 gigs, it frees up your 5 gig spectrum mm -hmm. for your access points and the client radios that connect to that. Very good. Good point. Yep, yep. So, all right. And the next radio that we'll at, talk you're about. You're saying, so at, at 24, it's less congested depending on the, uh, right. the area, the metropolitan area, wherever you're deploying. You'll find that. much less 24 gig interference than you would yeah. 5 gig for sure. Uh, the next radio is the B11. Uh, the B11 radios are great for mid to long range links. You'd want to use these links when you need high throughput, but you don't have any 5 gigahertz spectrum available. Please keep in mind that since it's a high frequency, weather conditions will affect this more than it would a 5 gigahertz link. Larger dishes are required for longer links. So Eric, where would you, what situation would you deploy a, a B11? Yeah, this is, this is great for uh, mountain topping, tower to tower, long distance, long distances. Um, we've got them out at uh, 18, uh, 8 and 18, uh, 26.1 miles, uh, et cetera, uh, with uh, high fire rates, et cetera. Right. And we've and so got forth. one that's even go going, <clears throat> what, 41 miles as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so one example of a B11 link is this 25-mile link we're showing here on the screen. It's using four-foot dishes, which are also 37.5 dBi. With a 5 gigahertz link, you would be able to achieve a decent link with a two-foot dish, which is 30 dBi, but a great link with a three-foot dish, which is 34 dBi. But again, that really depends on if you have spectrum available. So the 11 gigahertz radio is just another option for you. Uh, Jeff, where would you use a B11? Well, one, one important point about the B11 is the fact that it's a licensed radio. And uh, unfortunately, with Wi-Fi and 5 gigahertz and now even the 24 gigahertz filling up, the beauty of the B11 is that it's a dedicated uh, channel pair that is uh, coordinated and allocated by FCC. So you're not going to have to deal with someone jumping onto your channel yep. or your uh, frequency because these uh, frequencies are actually allocated and licensed by FCC. So that's where I would use a B11 solution where you don't have um, a lot of uh, frequency available but you do have availability in the uh, 10 and 11 gigahertz uh, range. Right, and so we are partnered with a, a, a link coordinator called Intel Path, but there's other link coordinators you can use out there as well. Um, so they'll look at your proposed link and then they'll give you the information on what transmit power you can use and what channels and channel widths are also available because unfortunately the 11 gig spectrum is becoming more and more crowded uh, every day 
because of coordinations. Yeah, a lot of the towers around, uh, you know, in, in San Francisco, up and down the, uh, uh, a bit up and down the coast, around the uh, around the Bay Area here, down in the valley, uh, very populated with ten. So we look closely at uh, who's getting what. Uh, look look at our uh, modulation schemes. Uh, where can we fit in? And where it's all about coordination. So what does yeah. this mean for our, our customers that are uh, across the water, uh, where they don't have the strict eleven gig uh, uh, regulations that we have? I'll go ahead. Well, I think, uh, you know, depending upon the country uh, and the country of operation, there's different rules and regulations. Uh, some of the uh, locations outside the United States are very relaxed, whereas other locations, uh, for example, in, in Europe, there is more restrictive uh, uh, licensing that occurs. So it really is dependent upon the, the country of operation. Right. So, can I, so can I, I'm in the U.K., can I take a 10-gig radio? And look at the spectrum, see see what I'm seeing from point A and, and out in the field? Well, you probably could, but as far as uh, operating, you're going to need to check with your uh, Ministry of Communications. Make sure that you're operating legally because uh, over in the U.K., they're very restricted yeah. when it comes to uh, communicating uh, wirelessly. Yeah. Right. And I know in Canada, you, uh, the 11 gig spectrum isn't even currently available as far uh, yeah. as I know. Good point. So. That's another one. Yeah. Uh, or mm -hmm. you could do Lebanon, where we've seen 20 B11s on one tower. So, so it's kind of Wild West uh, or, or so. Right. You can do yeah. whatever you want. See what right. you can get right. away with. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about are our cost-effective backhauls, which includes the C5C and the C5X. So these both operate from 4.9 to 6.4 for those of uh, folks that can use that spectrum outside the U.S. or for those that have public safety licenses for 4.9. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't provide as much throughput as, say, the, the B5 or the B5C would, but they're very affordable solutions. Both of these are great for short and mid-range backhaul shots, and the C5C is also great for long-range shots as well. So why would I choose a C5C over um, a B5C? Or why would I choose a C5X over a C5C? Maybe the application and the cost. Right. So I can get some good, what kind of performance? I can get good performance, but how much? Uh, what can I get on my rates? Uh, what's, what are my distances? But I think you're looking at uh, cost and uh, ease of uh, deployment. Yeah, I think the B5C offers a dual channel uh, radio solution, so it gives you the maximum uh, throughput rates, whereas maybe your solution that you're looking for doesn't re require, you know, over a gigabit uh, of, uh, of throughput. So uh, you may require less throughput. So maybe a single channel radio like yeah. the C5C or C5X is uh, more appropriate for your for your network design. So it's it's always easier to throw up a, yeah. a C5C or C5X initially, and if your bandwidth requirements require. Right. You're going to spend. over what the C5C or the C5X can offer, then you can upgrade to the B5 or the B5C. Yeah, I've never thrown up a B5C or C5C <laughs> it's before yeah. lunch or after. <laughs> I've installed them, but I've never <laughs> thrown them up. Uh, and that X, well, look, look at the C5, C5X product. Yeah, that yeah, it's easy going down. You know, it's hard to. But uh, you, you know, that's the uh, cost uh, of the look, biggest. Look, the cost and the versatility. So you can go PTMP or just point to point with the, the unit. So and then a variety of uh, antennas right. and stuff for distances. And so things speaking things. of distances and antennas, right. uh, for those that are able to see the slides, uh, I've got a picture here of a 56-mile link with C5C, uh, three-foot dishes at neg 72.9 dBm. Uh, the fire rates are 116 by 58, so we're getting about, uh, we're in auto mode, so about 100 by 50 uh, out to this really remote location and as you can see here there's actually traffic crossing the link they've got 43.8 megs nice. total right oh, now yeah. yeah that's pretty cool you, this is a this is a good time good snapshot and a good time frame on this for this particular long link too uh because we see some uh, variations uh, right uh, throughout the season yeah this, this link yeah. is over the water it's so it's it's yeah, doing very it's doing it's very, very well this very year well. because our our weather here in northern california has been very mild this summer so um, sorry, everybody else who has really bad weather. Well, you brought up a good point about weather because if you uh, do need to maintain a certain amount of uh, throughput, mm -hmm. maybe a B5C is in order then because if you have a B5C, if you drop down a certain amount of uh, attenuation due to inversion layers or other factors mm -hmm. involved, uh, you might be able to stay within that means of uh, communication, whereas on this radio here, uh, you're looking at your MAC rate of 70 by 35 uh, megabits per second. So uh, 
um, if this is acceptable, then you know you're good to go. Your MC, MCS here is uh, threes or something, maybe. Yeah, it looks. Well, yeah, I, I think the key yes. here is to make sure that your uh, your fire rates are uh, stable because if they're fluctuating a lot, yeah, that may yeah. be something due to, like, an inversion layer or. You know, there's a lot of things that can happen. Yeah, that, that pole is uh, moving around. You have a guide. Down. That can happen too, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So another common question we have <clears throat> is, what C5X antenna should I use? Mm -hmm. um, uh, how far can the C5X antennas transmit uh, with a decent signal? So this one is the C5X without an antenna at all. So Eric, yeah. how far do you think so that these would so go? So it's kind of, this is the, this is the, uh, the native uh, 8 dB, so it's uh, just the integrated before we're adding a, an X product to it. So uh, with a wide pattern, I, I give it uh, from here to uh, a couple of buildings over, uh, maybe a, a tenth of a mile uh, or so-ish. Uh, Jeff, what do you think? Well, my official answer is it, it, uh, my, my official answer is it yeah. depends, but right. yeah. what I like to do, it's just so I can keep my sanity, well. is I'll say 8 dBi, so that's uh, one-tenth of a mile or less. Uh, 16 is 1.6 miles. Just, you know, give me an idea. It really depends on the RF environment, mm -hmm. but the rule of thumb is to... Uh, you know, have, I, honestly, if I was out in the field, I would have every single antenna, and based on uh, the RF environment, you can always adjust the antennas by just screwing a new, uh, higher gain yeah. antenna on there. Yeah. So, um, you know, or it really depends. The, right. Or look at the uh, design tool. You know, we put it, we put some native eights out there and some short uh, links, uh, and then we put them out and see how they, what they do. And then it went up to the uh, X12 and so on. And then we also went to the design tool and go, hey, how, how does it compare? And that right. was very important. The best way to do it is to obviously use a design tool yeah. because the design tool is going like to um, give you the ballpark figures. But yeah. like I said, there's a lot of variables that we don't know. For example, we don't know how much uh, RF environment, uh, how much uh, background noise there. If there's yeah. a lot of background noise or if there's competing technologies on yeah. the same tower, you may want to put a higher gain antenna on there so that you can mitigate you know, uh, nearby interference. So there's, like I said, there's a lot of variables that we need to Vet uh, out. And, and like, and you and you you alluded to this. So the beam patterns are going like the beam patterns are going like that as we right. here's 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 low gain eight dB, and then as we get into the sixteens and twenties, now we're going to tighten that up. Doesn't mean that that that's what's happened to the energy on the other side end of the link, though, does it? No. Right. So, but yeah. So, All right. So is there an official answer that we're, yeah, uh, we're giving we're, our customers? Did we, did we uh, answer you question? were asking us, so I'm asking you. Well, <laughs> did we answer the question? So my conservative <laughs> answer was 500 feet. Yeah. Um, for the, the 12, uh, my conservative answer would be 1,000 feet. Um, for the 16, um, three-quarters of a mile. Uh, yeah, you do maybe, yeah, that a little better, but yeah, it depends. Again, it depends. So, whatever, again, yeah. we're doing conservative we'll, numbers. We'll, right. we'll put it on the uh, design tool or we'll, we'll look at so what, the population, the, the near field stuff. Yep, yep. For the 20, we, we both agreed on two miles. Yeah, we're, we're, we're running lots of two mile uh, out at uh, a mile and a half to 2.1 uh, with uh, max rates, eights and nines on the MCS, max mod rates. Uh, right. They're looking very good. Uh, and some uh, open Fresnel uh, links at uh, two miles. And the yeah. 25, I have uh, conservatively at six miles, but there's been people who've pushed it even further than that. Oh, right. really? That's right. good. That's good. We've got uh, we've got them out there at uh, five, five one, five point one, ish, for example, in, in a couple of test areas, and it's a fine. And then for anything past that, of course, you would do C5C with a a, yeah. a 30 dBi dish or larger. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I know, Jeff, you've had experience with this next question. So another common question would be, can I use a C-series radio as a backhaul between two micropops? So basically A5C to C5 or C5C or C5X to another A5, A5C. You can, but it's not generally uh, advised to do that because there's things you have to deal with. One is... Um, if you're doing uh, a C5 to another uh, A5, yeah, it's really not designed for that because it's a multipoint. I would actually dedicate a, a separate radio altogether uh, to do such a right. thing as a backhaul. Yeah, and the micropop you want to grow into your uh, bandwidth as, as you expand too. Right, right. so you're going to so have a, a pretty low amount of throughput available, so you'd want to upgrade yeah. you know, pretty right. quick. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so another common question is, can I connect a C5C to a C5X in point-to-point -point mode? Yeah. The answer is yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You certainly can do that, but make sure they're both on the same firmware version. Yeah. Uh, we, we actually have one that's connected at right. 41 miles that the C5C on one end and C5X and on the other. And let's say my C5C is, uh, maybe it's uh, it's old, it's way out of warranty. I'm running, I'm running some really old firmware on there. You, you're going to look in that, where's the, where's the cutoff if I'm at... Do I need 2.0? It's not going to talk. Or 2.2. You, you need 2.5.0 or greater to do greater. that. Greater, but right. if but if I'm at say my C5C is old and I've got something real pre, pre, uh, prior like uh, firmware two two three or something two 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 three yeah, I'm going to need to make a step up on the upgrade and then bring it up to 2.5.0 etc. Right two six. Yes. Right. Yeah, you want to have Otherwise, the same matching firmware. Yeah. The other thing that's kind of a rule of thumb too is uh, make sure that you can try to get those antennas close to the same dB of gain so that you don't have an asymmetrical signal. Uh, so if you're using, you know, mm -hmm. a 15 or 16 dB antenna and the other one's a 30 dB antenna, they'll work, but your your um, values will be off a little. Right. And I guess since uh, we're reaching our time here, one more common question that we can answer for you guys. Um, so that question is, can I use a C5 as a point-to-point -point radio? To another C5C or C5X. Oh, point to oh, so old oh, C5. Eric answer that. Mm -hmm. I'll watch him squirm. I, I'm squirming. You could use that, can't you? No, you cannot use it. The old C5C. No, no, a C5. Oh, a C5. No, not for point to point. But why? Uh, firmware incompatibility. I don't know. You have to edit this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Let, let's let the customers laugh at you. But at oh, least yes. you know the answer Bring is it in. no. No, and why? Why? Because <laughs> firmware incompatibility. Firm, firm, firmware. Well, and hardware, know. of course. Yeah, it's not meant to be a point-to-point -point radio. Is it a converted B5 light to see. Well, the boot ROM on the radio is different. So if you do try to load right. a point-to-point -point, uh, firmware on there, one, it, it should error out. But back in the day. Uh, if yeah. you did that, it would actually brick the radio. So we really don't want people doing that because now you got a paperweight. Well, if you if you want expensive paperweights, I guess you can do it that way. Yeah, but don't but do that it. Thing, that thing, that C five only weighs it's it's this much. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, I think that's it for this episode. Please, if you have questions on these shows, feel free to post on the YouTube page uh, that the video is on or send us emails at podcast at mimosa.co but other than that we'll see you on the the next help me help you video so we'll see you next time all right thanks guys thanks for tuning in please hit the subscribe or follow button to stay up to date with our latest podcast which will be available on youtube itunes google play and soundcloud